This is the first in a series of short videos that are designed to teach you how to write for big band. While I am going to go over fundamentals, this video is really intended for people that are already composers. It's also good for people who are just interested in writing music for their school, semi-pro or even professional jazz ensemble, or honestly anyone looking to up their big band game. Well, I'll be talking specifically about 13 horn band. Uh, these techniques will apply to all variations of the jazz ensemble. I'm Elliot Deutsch. Good to meet you. I've been writing and leading a big band since 2006. And in that time, I've released four albums of my own work, and I've written for many major jazz ensembles. Here's a partial list. All right, that's what a list looks like. In this video, I'm going to show you the most fundamental of all arranging techniques, closed voicing. Before we can jump in, I need to get a few concepts out of the way. This part may go by really fast for those of you where it's unfamiliar, so please feel free to pause the video or just back it up and watch it again and again. There are three types of chords that we're going to deal with most of the time in writing for jazz ensemble. That's major, minor, and dominant. Uh, I know there are other types of chords, but this will cover 95% of the music we're dealing with. For major, we have major 6, major 6-9, six, major 7, major 9, major 13, all of which sound very similar, and as an arranger we can use them interchangeably. Similarly for minor, we have, you know, vanilla minor, minor 6, minor 7, minor 9, and minor 11. In fact, in minor 11 chords, we typically leave out the ninth. So you can, but you know, sometimes you can use both for extra richness. Uh, for dominant chords, we, there aren't as many. We have uh, the regular seven chord, a nine chord, and a 13 chord. In fact, there are many alterations you can make to a dominant chord, but they change its character and I don't consider them to be entirely interchangeable as I do with these three. So now that I have that stuff out of the way, we can move on to closed voicing. Here's a lead line I've written over a set of chord changes. Here's how we can arrange it for the entire horn section. For closed 2D technique, we'll begin by harmonizing just the trumpets. Write harmonies vertically, one note at a time. And here are some rules to follow. Number one, always leave at least a minor third between the top voice and the second voice. Number two, leave out the root, unless the melody is playing the third of the chord. And as you get into this, you'll realize that there's no other way to do it in that circumstance. In that case, where the melody is on the third, the, the second voice down, trumpet two, is going to be playing the root. If the melody is on the root, put the second voice on the sixth or the thirteenth. You might have noticed we're trying to get all the notes within one octave. And the reason we talked about interchangeable chords is if you voice down from the top and leave a minor third between the top voice and the second voice, it you might not be able to fit all the voices within a, one octave unless you understand how to uh, use these chords interchangeably. So uh, a good example of that is if we look at the third bar, um, it's a D minor 7 is the written chord, and beat 2 we have a D natural uh, as the melody. So if we voice down from there, leaving enough space, the next voice down would be an A, then an F natural, then another D. and. Uh, that wouldn't work, we'd end up with too many voices on the melody. So, in this case, I voiced it as a, a D minor 11, uh, including the G natural in the middle there. 
Um, it would have also been a good choice, I guess. I could have used a B natural. I could have gone from the top D, then B natural, A, F, and that would have made it a momentary D minor six. I tend to prefer the sound of the 11th, but uh, both would be fine. As a little side note, don't leave any comments or email me about parallel fits, direct octaves, or any of that stuff you learned about in first year music theory class. Those techniques only apply when you're writing box style choral music. Now that we've harmonized the trumpets, here's how they sound. In truth, harmonized trumpets rarely play unsupported in modern big band. The next step, and this is where it's going to look like I'm cheating, um, copy the four trumpet parts into the four trombone staves and drop them down an octave. Then take those, those four trombone voices and copy them into alto one through tenor two in the same octave. Finally, we're going to compose a Barry Sachs part, uh, giving them mostly roots. We can use other chord tones on shorter notes. Here's what it sounds like all put together. This is how I write Ensemble 2D for the big band. This is the technique I use all of the time. When I want a classic big band sound, this is how it's achieved. You don't need to make it more complicated than that. Um, if you got something out of this and you want to learn more about arranging for the big band, please subscribe to my channel by clicking the subscribe link down below, and don't forget to hit the thumbs up! Hey, before we're done, do you notice that all the notes in my example were chord tones? That was definitely intentional. Um, in the next video, I'll show you a few techniques for how to harmonize non-chord tones in your melody. Thanks, and I'll see you then. Thank you.